Thank you very much, uh, Secretary of Defense, Chief of Defense Staff, Service Commanders, Vice Chancellor of KDU, uh, General Melinda Pires. Ladies and gentlemen, let me focus on the context of session one. And to start with, let me share with you that as the 20th century ended, there was only one insurgent campaign that was defeated, and that was the campaign in Malaya. So in the 21st century, the first insurgent and the terrorist campaign to be defeated in the world is the campaign in Sri Lanka. So that is the context of the Sri Lankan campaign. The, if you look at the campaign in Malaya, the chief strategist and the architect was Sir Gerald Templer, in fact, there is a road in Mount Lavinia called Templar's Road, and that is named after Sir Gerald Templar because he was a visitor to Sri Lanka. And the Malayan campaign, after the defeat of the communist insurgents, Sir Templar, together with his direct operations, General Richard Clutterbuck, and General Clutterbuck is a general who visited Sri Lanka during President Jayawardena's period, and I had the fortune of meeting with him. I discussed with both of them. I, I discussed with uh, General Katabak and with President Jayawardena about the JVP insurgency because he came at the height of the JVP insurgency. Katabak made a very important recommendation. He said that it is important to use counterinsurgency, counterterrorist strategies to dismantle the terrorist and the insurgent group but it is also important to win the hearts and the minds. And today, if you look at the presentation by the Secretary of Defense, he focused on the, the measures the government has put in place to win the hearts and minds. And the key phrase that he used was reconciliation. And if you take reconciliation and if you break it down to components, you will see that the first component of reconciliation is rehabilitation. So I would argue that rehabilitation is step one in reconciliation. And I want to share with you, if you look at the global terrorist rehabilitation programs, that Sri Lanka has built a world-class rehabilitation program. I discussed the aspect of rehabilitation of terrorists with Secretary of Defense over many hours. And I want to share with you that he is not only the principal architect of defeating the LTT, but he is also the principal architect of the reconciliation strategy for Sri Lanka. In fact, as a result of that discussion, we had the we launched the inaugural national conference on reconciliation on the 24th of November uh, in last year at the Kadiragama Institute and the Secretary of Defense spoke at that conference and he very clearly laid out a map how we should proceed, not only with the terrorist rehabilitation program, but also with the IDP resettlement and with the reintegration. So I want to say that today I am witnessing something very unique in Sri Lanka. One is that those war fighters have today become the champions of peace. They understood that in their heart that it was not only essential to contain, to isolate, and to eliminate terrorism, but it was also equally important to reach out to those people who were radicalized, who became a victim of the terrorist ideology, and who became the pawns and the followers of a terrorist movement. So in many ways, if you look at the strategy that has been adopted by the Sri Lankan government, it was to defeat terrorism and restore peace. And also it was to stabilize the country through the strategy of reconciliation. Let me share with you two other aspects. Based on my personal interviews with a very large number of LTT carders who either surrendered or who were detained at the end of the war, the strategy adopted by Sri Lanka was not punitive justice. There are two principal methods of justice. One is punitive justice, that is you prosecute people. The second is you restore their lives, that is called restorative justice. You give them a second life. 
and the rehabilitation centers basically built, provided the skills and the training, not only the physical skills, but the psychological skills, so that they will be able to reintegrate peacefully to society and live as citizens. If you look at other global conflicts, if you look at Iraq, if you look at Afghanistan, in both these theaters, the insurgencies and the terrorist campaigns were not resolved. Because of American public pressure, the United States withdrew from Iraq. And today, Afghanistan remains in disarray, but the United States will pull out next year. So what is so special about the Sri Lankan conflict? When you look at the Sri Lankan conflict in the context of other insurgencies, one is that there was uh, not only the skill, but also the will on the part of the government, on the part of the military forces, on the part of the security forces of Sri Lanka, not only to apply the necessary counter-terrorist, counter-insurgent strategies, but also to apply the strategies to restore life in those areas, so that there will be no relapse back to violence. There will be no recidivism going back to violence. And that is a very key stabilization phase. And you can only do that if you eliminate terrorism. If you do not eliminate terrorism and you still have pockets of terrorists, all the efforts you put in for redevelopment will be wasted. So this concept was understood by the military strategists, the military planners of Sri Lanka. Let me <clears throat> share another two aspects as we look more into the Sri Lankan conflict. My own assessment is that Sri Lanka still faces a number of challenges. One of the greatest challenges that Sri Lanka faces is that it failed miserably in having a good strategic information campaign. And I personally believe that it is crucial for Sri Lanka in the next few years to build those specialist centers, specialist capabilities to counter the misinformation and the disinformation that, is, that has been still generated by those extremist and terrorist organizations, often operating through front cover and sympathetic organizations. Although the terrorist movement in Sri Lanka has been defeated, the LTT international structure has been able to reconstitute itself through three distinct front organizations operating. One in the United States, the transnational government of Tamil Ilam, operating out of New York, led by former Central Committee member of the LTT, Viswanathan Rudrakumaran. We have a second structure, which is the Global Tamil Forum, which is operating out of London, led by Father S.J. Emmanuel, who was a key ideologue of the LTT. The third structure is led by a man called Nediyavan. His name is Perimpa Nayagam Sivaparan. And he was one of the bodyguards of Prabhakaran. And subsequently, he was sent to Russia to study and then he came back and he worked as a translator for the head of the LTT International Secretariat, a man called Manivanan, also known as Castro. And subsequently, Nedivan relocated to Norway. So the third faction of the LTT operating overseas is functioning out of Oslo. And he calls his organization, he has two organizations. One is the Tamil Coordinating Committee, other is the Tamil Youth Organizations. So, if you look at the future challenges facing Sri Lanka, certainly one is to counter the misinformation and the disinformation campaign. Second is to re-engage the Sri Lankan Tamils who are located overseas. Because in many ways, the Sri Lankan foreign missions overseas were ineffective. And they could not reach out to the Sri Lankan communities overseas. And as a result, the LTT was able to build those front organizations and radicalize and politicize and mobilize a very small segment of the Tamil community. And we call that tiny segment the lunatic fringe. It's a very small community, but it is essential also to reach out to them. So I want to share with you that Sri Lanka has achieved very significantly 
in the last five to six years, not only in restoring law and order, restoring peace, but also restoring stability, restoring a harmonious living, promoting the concepts, the three invaluable concepts of moderation, of toleration, and of coexistence, which in my opinion is the greatest heritage we inherited from our forefathers. It is the capacity and the mental frame to live together as brothers and sisters. But I want to say that what we have lost in the last 30 years, we have done a lot to restore it in the last three years. And that is a very significant achievement. As Sri Lankans, we all want to run. But I think that tremendous amount of work has been done and we need to sit back and appreciate. Let me make two or three concluding points. One is, let me look at the, this great seat of learning, the Sir John Kotalawalapura Defense University. This university not only had very eminent staff, such as our Secretary of Defense, who was the commanding officer, and also the deputy commandant, but it also provided the knowledge for war fighting to bring stability. But today, looking at the theme of this symposium, I see that KDU is also providing the new knowledge that is required to redevelop the Northeast, to bring about harmony, to promote the values of coexistence that we have had for centuries in this country. So KDU, under the leadership of General Melinda Pires, our Vice Chancellor, he has very rapidly moved and he's training this new generation of leaders, future leaders, emerging leaders and current leaders to meet the current challenge, the need of the hour of this nation. And I am very confident that General Melinda Pires is not only a man who is focused on the military and on the reconciliation dimensions, but he also brings the great tradition of Sir John. You can see the entertainment this morning. Sir John was a man who had a zest for life, and he always liked entertainment. And we are most grateful to you, General, for entertaining us with that performance. And let me say that he has also invited a very impressive cast of speakers, not only from the region of Asia, our neighbors, but also from the United States, also from New Zealand. And I believe that this panel will share with you not only the experience that they have witnessed, but also their own impressions and their views of what has happened in Sri Lanka, the ground reality of what has happened in Sri Lanka vis-a-vis -vis perceptions. And to start the session, let me introduce uh, General Katoch, who is from India. The general is a very special general, personally to me, because not only he excelled in counterinsurgency and counterterrorist operations in India, but also he served in Sri Lanka. He was in Mankulam, he was in Trincomalee, he knows Sri Lanka very well. And with that very brief introduction, let me invite the general from India to take the stand. Thank you.